Hey friend, welcome to the Paul Leslie Hour. On this episode, we're welcoming trombonist Richie LaBamba Rosenberg, formerly of the house band of Conan O'Brien's Late Night Talk Show. So let's get started with the interview, guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be welcoming one of the city of brotherly love's most beloved musicians. We're joined by trombonist Richie LaBamba Rosenberg. He's got his trademark hat on, looking very cool, and I'm very honored to welcome him here. (laughs) Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Paul. Pleasure to be here. You're a good man. Did you know that, Richie? (laughs) Ah, that's sweet. And thank you to uh, whoever that was who's been, who helped us with our our technical. My daughter, Samantha, came to the rescue. Thank you, Samantha. Absolutely. (laughs) So I think a lot of stories are best from the beginning. Tell us about what a typical day was like growing up in Philadelphia. Well, um, there was a lot of music, a lot of great music came out of Philly. Uh, My influence in in the beginning was my family. They all played and sang and uh, my sister played multiple instruments, and she uh, she acted. Uh, she was in theater at the school. Um, so uh, there, there was a lot going on. I had a stepfather who was uh, very uh, influential to me in jazz. He wasn't a musician, but he was a great dancer, and. Uh, he, he influenced me a lot. He just told me different people to go out and listen to and buy records. And um, I, I did just that. So what about you, Richie? Can you dance? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm married to a dancer. Oh, yeah? Yes. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so... It, it was jazz early on. Can you tell us what is it? What is it that excites you about jazz music? What doesn't excite me about it? <laughs> What's not exciting about it? I, you know, I, I love it. It's funny how some people like make fun of it. You know, hmm. uh, soft jazz or or what? <laughs> they make jokes out of it. You know, uh, on Conan sometimes Conan would make some jokes about that you know but i love it and you know it's one of those styles of music that i mean i can think of different types of music that i've heard just your instrument the trombone everything from i've 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 gone to see new orleans jazz bands that that have a trombone player i've heard uh you know rock groups that have the trombone it's just there's so much variety of music and jazz is almost something that's impossible to define yeah yeah um i think one of my first concerts i went to was chicago you know jimmy pankow wow it's incredible and that makes sense that that somebody uh who would become so interested in the trombone uh, early on would see a Chicago show. Yeah, I was in a band in high school. We played all the Chicago and Blood, Sweat and Tears stuff and and not just the popular stuff, but we really dug into the rest of the albums. We played everything off the album. And speaking of albums, are, are you a music collector? Yeah, I have quite a bit of records. Probably about a thousand records. About a thousand records. And could could you tell us about maybe a couple of things that you're especially proud of? Well, all my J.J. Johnson records, because uh, my stepfather said, go out and listen to every J.J. Johnson you know, thing you can find. So um, I, got, I think I got most of my records in, in the beginning from a, a store in Philadelphia called Third Street Jazz. And I went there and um, I just picked up everything JJ I could find. As far as piano, I, Bill Evans, 
Oscar Peterson. Um, and then I, I moved on from there to you know, other trombone players that I love, you know, Curtis Fuller and Slide Hampton and, you know, there's so many greats. We had a trombone player on this show as a guest. It was a real thrill for me. And I know for a lot of the listeners, it was a thrill too. Tell us about the times in, when you've been able to interact with Tom Bones Malone. Well, uh, Tom, I love Tom. Um, I was on Letterman a few times, you know, um, played just a few jobs with Tom here and there. That's it. Love Tom as a player, as a person. Great, great guy. <laughs> What is the experience of being on television? What is that like? Is it is it at all strange that your public job is, you know, your your job is to be so much in the public? Well, I was thrown into that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the comedy writers. I don't. I don't know what it was. I don't. I don't know what they they were thinking. But. Um, I got very involved with that. Um, thankfully, I'm grateful that they did. <laughs> and Conan's beautiful, and he was just like, pick on me all the time. <laughs> just in a loving way, of course. Maybe a difficult question to answer, but how would you define Conan O'Brien? Wow, that's that that's uh, that's a tough question. Um, but uh, I love Conan. Um, he he was such a big help to me, and got along with the band great. And he's a people person. And yeah. One of the things I think is really obvious from him is it, it, it does seem like he's a guy who just sincerely loves music. Yeah, he plays guitar. He loves rockabilly probably the most. You know, he would occasionally come up and sing and play with us. Uh, we did a live tour together after in between the late night and the Tonight Show. We did a like a three month tour and he really got involved musically at that time and it was always fun. He was like in the rafters, like playing and <laughs> running around singing. <laughs> it was it was great. Do you perhaps have a favorite skit or a favorite moment from the show? Well, um, we we did a year 2000 sketch that caught on and uh i got about you know 17 or so years out of that we were talking on the phone the other day and and you when you went on the road with conan i'm hoping you can tell us your memories of playing at the tabernacle in atlanta uh Wow, what a, an iconic uh, building that is, right? Oh, yeah, old building. Um, I just, I remember that we were playing up in the, in the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, this, the band was like, yeah, playing in the balcony, looking down at everything. And can you imagine what it must have been like for the, the guys to hook all that up? What, what what a nightmare. Um, as far as audio, that was a nightmare because it it was kind of like playing in a big bathroom. <laughs> you know? But the crowds were great and it was it was exciting. You know, there was something very exciting about that location. Our friend John Primerano, he asked us to mention this and uh 
this is a title that I'm sure a lot of people will scratch their head over, but tell us about the significance of Take Back Your Heart, I Ordered Liver. <laughs> In high school, I was left conducting by myself. The whole band walked off. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the song. That was the song? Yeah. <laughs> And you think if you if you maybe heard a, f a few bars of it, you could be right back there and jump right in. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that you can tell us about uh, your love of orchestration. How did you get interested in doing that? Early on in high school. Um. I would transcribe a lot. I mean, back back then, um, that that was always uh, we didn't realize it at the time how challenging that was before cassette players came out with the Walkmans and whatnot. But lifting the needle up and down, up and down, <laughs> until you uh, you finally are able to write what you're hearing on a score pad, or a piece of paper, you know. Now, people who are watching this, they might see right behind you, you have a sign. It says Southside Johnny's. Let's see. South Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. 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 How did you meet Johnny? Uh, there was a trumpet player in our in our band. Uh, right out of high school. And uh, he was playing in this band, Southside Johnny. And I was on the road with another band. And I got the call from him to come down and try out. I was in Schenectady at the time. I've never been to Asbury Park in my life. You know, being from Philadelphia, um, there's areas of the Jersey Shore that you go to that certain groups of people, you know, go to. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so Philadelphians would gravitate to the South Jersey Shore. Atlantic City basically, you know, down. And if you're in the, you live in the middle of the state, you, then you go straight across and you're around Asbury or, you, you know, you have your summer homes and whatnot. And uh, North Jersey, you know, go to North Jersey. But a lot of a lot of Canadians would go to Wildwood for some reason. I don't know. Well, Wildwood had a great beach, hmm. but uh, yeah. So different groups of people gravitate to different areas, and um, so I was uh, I got the call uh, to go down there and audition. I left the band that I was with. I left a note under the the door of the, uh, the leader of the band. I got an offer I can't refuse. And I just took off. Not very professional, but I, <laughs> I just about had it with that guy. Uh, and, uh, and there were no other trombone players at the audition. It was just myself. I just think they just wanted to see how it was all going to work out. They used the trombone on the, on the first record. And uh, Rick Asta, the trumpet player, got all those players for that record. And uh, I'm happy that he gave me the call. If it wasn't for Rick, it'd be a whole different storyline right now. Now, there's an album that people might be aware of, but they really, really recommended that they check it out. And I'm talking, and they'll hear you on there. I'm talking about Southside Johnny's tribute to Tom Waits. Tell us about that, how that how that record came to be, the Grapefruit Moon record. Yeah. Um, this is it right here. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah, hold it back just a little. There we there go. go. Get a good luck look, folks. Yeah. Um so uh I kept on orchestrating through the years and 
I started a, uh, a big band. I was doing some Christmas shows um, in Red Bank, New Jersey. And Johnny was one of the guests that I invited to come up and sing. And we, uh, we put the big band together. All the artists that came up, you know, played with that band. I wrote all the charts out. And I kept going from there. So through the years, Johnny would come back and, and sing with me and join us. And uh, he asked me, you know, he really had this idea about this project that he'd love to do. He asked me to orchestrate it. Yeah, hell yeah. How did, how did you feel about the album when it, when you, when it was completed? I loved it. I, I was just we we were all we were all very excited about it, and Tom liked it too. And Johnny's really good friends with Tom, and uh, he played the first four songs for him, and he got a great letter back, you know, saying, "Yeah, go 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 ahead, keep doing this. This is hmm. great." That's quite a compliment. Yeah. Well, you know, you've you've had the chance to play with a lot of people. There's also that Bruce Springsteen. It looks like that's the Seeger Sessions poster. Yeah, yeah. That was so much fun. What a surprise. Tell us about it. Well, um, we were playing at a a party, just jamming at Bruce's house in his barn. And... Uh, there was a a group that that Bruce got uh, that's like a a country western kind of sound, and uh, myself and uh, Eddie Mannion, we jumped up on the stage and just started coming up with some horn parts, and Bruce remembered that and he got an idea to to do some of uh, Pete Seeger's songs. We recorded uh, We Shall Overcome. And then he put that on a like a tribute album to Pete Seeger. And then he just took that idea and went much further with it. And we recorded that up in his farmhouse. The horns were sitting in a, like right next to the front door in a hallway the band was like in, in the living room drums were in a in another room behind us <laughs> and we had these little cameras these little monitors up on the hanging off the roof that we could you know see what was going on all right by the seat of your pants let's go bang let's start playing these songs and it was amazing how that came together because Bruce would just, all right, we're going to, he's strumming along, and, uh, we're going to try this in this key. No rehearsals, no nothing, you know, just like, <laughs> by the seat of your pants, let's go, all right, join in. <laughs> and that's how it was done. And, and basically, a lot of the first takes were used for that wow. record. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've had the chance to play with a lot of people, just aside from doing shows, but also the experience of, of the, the Conan program. Who has yeah. really knocked you out that you got to play with? Oh, wow. Um, Lionel Hampton. No kidding. Um, let's see. We had Ruth Brown, Isaac Hayes. There were so many of them. Yeah. Isaac Hayes came in, he did Shaft, changed the lyrics to Conan. <laughs> Conan, can you dig it? <laughs> yeah, there were so many. I, I, I can't remember them all at the same time. It's just great memories of that. Isn't it true you, you are a lover of comic book art? Yeah. Jack Kirby, Marvel Comics. Yeah. 
Has that been a lifelong interest? Yeah. Uh, I went to art class uh, and then I went to like an art school for a short period of time. Um, and uh, I enjoyed uh, drawing, especially comic books, you know, like transcribing music, listening what I'm, lift the needle up, you know, look at a comic book, draw the comic book, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I was, I really enjoyed that a lot. And I kept on uh, doing that until now I have like a huge collection of comic books. So at one point in time, I needed some cash. Mm. And I did the really stupid thing that a lot of people do, I'm sure. They need some cash, they're going to go to the comic book store, they're going to sell their comics. And at that time, that was a Silver Age collection of oh, comics wow. that I had. And oh, man, did I get ripped off. Totally like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> If well, I had those comics now, going to Comic Con, you know, because Conan would play Comic Con for like, we did it like four years in a row. And I'd walk through there, and my kids would say, Hey, we, you have this comic book, Dad? Oh, yeah, I, I have that. I'm sure I have that. Oh, Spider Man, no more. It's worth like a million bucks. Oh. And when we got back here to the house, <laughs> we took apart the whole comic book collection, laid everything out on the floor. I couldn't find that. That was one of the ones that I sold. I, you know, unless somebody stole it from me. <laughs> mm. Well, what's coming up? What's what's on the horizon for Richie Rosenberg? I've occasionally been playing with Billy Gibbons. We uh, we do these uh, guitar legend shows. Uh, they're called uh, America Salutes. That's the name of the company. And uh, we go out and we play these different locations with a lot of different artists that he invites to, uh, to play along with them. We've had some great shows. They've all been televised. There's, uh, I'm sure you can find them all on, on the Internet. Access TV, you know, play them. Um, the last one we did had the uh, we had Southside Johnny as a as a guest, as a matter of fact, and uh, the Blind Boys from Alabama, uh, and Bob Saget. Oh mm. my God, Bob Saget! Oh, I was playing in New York doing this show with Billy Gibbons. We were at the City Winery, and. Bob was there. I walked on the stage to um, to practice, to, to rehearse a number that he was doing. And he saw me, and he he made such a big deal out of it. It was like, oh, my gosh, La Bamba is here. And, you know, and he kept on going, you know, when, when it was showtime. And then after the show, he was like, I got to do, we have to find, like, a, a, a dark closet. I got to get you into a dark closet because we have to do a 2000 year 2000 sketch with the, you know, the flashlight underneath my chin and all. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. It was, it was hilarious. What a beautiful guy. Mm. I never realized how much of a fan he was. He was, it meant so much to him to do that. That was really cool. It, it seems like we've just lost so many, so many people over the last few weeks. Yeah. Ronnie Spector. Yeah. Ronnie used to be on the road with us with Southside Johnny. Mm. Uh, back in uh, 77. She was on Johnny's first record. She did a song called uh, You Mean So Much To Me Baby, recorded it on the first record. And uh, she, she was touring around with us in a freaking school bus. <laughs> it was like one of those yellow school buses that, you, you know, <laughs> hmm. and she was she was in the bus with us traveling around i had all these labels that i put on you that you're an entertainer a recording artist a trombonist how would you define richie labamba rosenberg who are you at heart well 
I hope I've been an, a, a good influence on my, my children, you know. Uh, morals, I try to, you know, correct morals and make sure that they, you know, with a lot of help from my other half. And uh, hopefully we made all the right moves for them, for their future. What is the best thing about being La Bamba? <laughs> <laughs> to have so many great friends and uh, to, to play with so many wonderful people and the wonderful experiences and the 25 years with Conan, the Super Bowl with with Bruce and there's so many great memories. Hmm. Well, I want to thank you for, for being a guest here on the show. It's been a great pleasure to do this. Well, it has for me too. Very grateful. And, uh, you know, one of the things about any kind of video or audio for that matter is there's uh there's what people see and hear. And then there's like the stuff, the, the retakes and we were having technical difficulties. I should tell everybody, but Richie, he stayed calm throughout that and we got there. So thank you for your patience in, in getting things <laughs> going. <laughs> uh, my pleasure, Paul. All right, sir. And a shout out to John Pimerano too. <laughs> Absolutely. JP. Thank you, JP. All right, sir. Until next time. Au yes, anytime. Thank you, Paul. All right. Bye. Thank you. You know, the Paul Leslie Hour is made possible by people like you, listeners, viewers. Please go to thepaulleslie.com slash support, and you'll know what to do when you're there. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who contributes. Video editing today by Kumar. Performance of The Entertainer intro song by John Primerano. And of course, this is your announcer speaking. See you next time on the Paul Leslie Hour.